It's been over a year since I reviewed Noctua NHD12L and it wasn't in Chromax Black like this one right here. And uh, it was with an old mechanism as well, with the locking mechanism. So today we get something new, but you already seen it under past coolers from Noctua, which basically you already know everything about it. So since I'm constantly using AMD platform for benchmarks and comparison and similar stuff, today we're going to go through that as well. And I think you already have an idea about the locking mechanism when we're talking about the D. NHD12L Chromax Black. So what's it all about and everything all together? We're going to go through some specifications and then definitely gonna go through some quite interesting benchmarks because as I promised yesterday, today we're going to have a huge comparison when we're talking about 360 AAO, 280 AAO, a bit thicker 360. And then we have a, a bit smaller CPU air cooler, right? Of course, you already presume where, where everything is placed and how everything goes, but just to see the numbers, which will definitely give you some more insights about everything and what you can expect. So we were talking about uh, some specs, main features, I would say 145 millimeters height, we, because it actually is quite interesting to have a 120 millimeter fan which fits in this type of cooler, yet still you have a possibility to place it uh, literally in almost, well, not all cases. After all, we do have SFF cases as well, but that's it. But the cool thing with the round frame of NFA1225R, uh, we have um, quite interesting, uh, let's say, placement on the in the cooler, basically. Also, we have the Secure Firm 2 multi-socket mounting uh, mechanism or system, uh, supports Intel LGA 1851, 1700, 1200, 11.5x, and so on and so on. And of course, AMD, AM5, and AM4. Now, when we go with the Chromox Black design, you know what we can expect in terms of uh, no loss when we're talking about coloring up the chrome or silver uh, heatsink. So, what they do and how they apply the paint on the heatsink, there is almost, I think what they stated is almost zero or a slight difference, which is barely noticeable altogether. So all in all, again, they what they do is they produce an outstanding cooler in variety of, well, two variety of colors to be exact. But then again, there's no uh, performance loss when they apply the paint. And uh, basically the Chromax Black is more in terms of color sheen to place it in a, well, let's say a more easier approach when placing them inside your builds. Now, uh, when we're talking about the mounting mechanism for AMD, uh, specifically AM5, you have, of course, the offset on their brackets. So what you do, you have to remove the original retention brackets. You place those two plastic standoffs and with the metal retention brackets, you have a possibility to place the cooler on zero offset, zero millimeter offset and minus seven millimeter offset. So, of course, I went immediately on minus seven millimeters because this will give a quite interesting comparison when we go with the AAO that I use because it has minus five millimeter offset. So let's uh, check it out. With Noctua NHD12L Chromax Black Aida 64 Extreme Edition on AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D CPU went up to 92 degrees and it kind of looks strange because you have a smaller cooler compared to a massive 360 AAO uh, like Liquid Freezer 3 360. But then you get the results with uh, clock speed with 4650 megahertz, which kind of makes sense, right? And the GPU stays the same, so literally no difference when we're talking about that. Now, when we go into Cinebench R23, the thermals are quite outstanding, I do have to say. So we have fixed 90 degrees Celsius throughout the whole 10 runs. And the CPU clock speed goes from 4900s, eventually going on the second round 4925, and then we go with 4875. Of course, the benchmarks, the Cinebench points show what it means to have an AAO and a cooler, and this is just for a comparison. I did a review a long time ago. This is something that you can expect when you place it inside a case that has this type of ventilation. So we have scores starting at 25,943, which is basically almost touching 26,000 in that scenario. So first and last run is almost touching 26,000, but everything else is around 25,700. Yeah, let's, let's circle it around 800 because when I take an average of everything, it's somewhere around that. And basically what I can say is it's not about, 
it's definitely about the performance, I won't lie. But when we're taking into consideration that you have a quite outstanding cooler in terms of, well, first of all, the design, when we're talking about the size, because 145 times 125 times 113 millimeters, copper and aluminum material, and all the compatibility. Then when we take into consideration the fan, we have 120 times 120 times 25 millimeters bearing SSO2, four pin, of course, PWM header, which goes directly to your motherboard. Uh, you have an LNA as well that you get inside the box. Maximum rotational speed of the fan is 2000 RPMs and the width the LNA is 1700 RPMs. And uh, well, basically what you can expect is maximum acoustical noise 22.6 decibels without the LNA and with the LNA 18.8 .8 with maximum, of course, uh, maximum acoustical noise. So mean time before failure is uh, 150,000 hours. And what I wanted to say is the compatibility with this CPU tower cooler is outstanding because with 145 millimeter of height, you can actually place it in any case. And you can even add fans on, well, depending on orientation, depending on the, let's put it this way, depending on the IO cover and the RAMs clearance and stuff like that. So you can actually add more fans to get more and better performance, right? But in terms of compatibility, in terms of cases, you can actually place it in some smaller cases that, well, basically need a smaller coolers. And when we take into consideration that you compare it with, which was a bit an insane idea, to be honest, but comparing it to 280, 360 and Ticker 360, and that it performs quite solidly still, it's a quite nice addition. So altogether, what we get with Noctua NHD12L Chromax Black is, well, let's say a more approachable color scheme, which definitely for some of you will most likely be more interesting, but it's all up to personal preferences, which I always don't go into those. But then again, we have a solid performance without a doubt. But the most important thing is that with that performance, you can not get a cooler that is that small and that can perform this good. Because after all, we are talking about quite nice fan that can push such um, outstanding airflow through the heatsink and yet still keeps the 7900X 3D at the same thermals but with a bit lower uh, scores, which isn't bad. And just because of the high, um, let's say with the high possibility to mount it in various cases, I'll give it a PC Crazy approved badge because, well, kind of makes sense. It does perform quite nicely. And I think a year ago, I actually gave it uh, some other badge I can't recall, honestly. But uh, yeah, definitely this time PC Crazy approved badge just because of everything that I mentioned. In those terms, I'll place the links in the description below so you can check out the Noctua NHD12L Chromax Black. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you want to see more content regarding Noctua as well, which I will have uh, two quite interesting builds coming up uh, in some time period, not quite sure when, but you know, it, it kind of goes into that segment where it just happens, I have the time and I create uh, something uh, quite interesting. So guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and I will see you quite shortly. Bye-bye.